and then you you know online online is like the internet is the the yeah the extension of the nervous system of humanity you know and it's it's pretty nifty actually so there's like all these these things on for pe from people that are awake awake they have realized you know they are abundance they can call in any pleasure any time and and they're like bored with this existence because there's nothing for them to do because they already have everything And it's like, well, well, what is there to do when you have everything and you've reached everything and you are a level 99, to speak in D2 terms? Really, the only thing left to do is help the others because if you real, really, really realize the oneness of it all, you're not just in the ecstasy, you're also in the agony because... In the oneness, all those sufferings are not separate from you. And they're absolutely feelable. So, maybe your time on this planet is done. And you are meant to be in realms of non-embodied dimensions. And that's fine. You go there. But what about the part of what is that is unconscious and in suffering? So what is yours to do in that? Where are you at with it? Where are you with realizing that being embodied is precious? And that you can only do the best you can. And who's to say what someone's best is. Like I am really tired. Which reminds me, it took me like literally from the time I was born, 60 years to recognize how the events in my infancy and very young childhood influenced my entire life. And there was a huge energy burst and, and it's like, wow, this is like amazing. This is like amazing. This is how one should feel at, you know, leaving home with that kind of joy and curiosity and energy and, and all that. But I have to tell you one thing. At 60, your body physically, hormonally, simply is not that of a 20-year-old or even a 30-year-old or even a 40-year-old. And especially for women, postmenopausal, things do, in fact, change. They are not that your brain isn't the same and your body isn't the same. Doesn't mean it has, doesn't have advantages. It doesn't mean you're not growing into eldership or wisdom or you know, whatever it is, whatever it might be. But it is not the same. And so for those of, for those who have been severely traumatized and never got to live a certain type of life that young people are supposed to live, there is a process of grieving that, that happens. Or that I recommend you acknowledge that because it's 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 real it's true 
Your life was your life. And you did not get that. You got what you got. In your own particular uh, way of being. Was it way of being? In your own particular conditioning. And once you get rid of that conditioning and that essence start shining through that that's always worth it that is always worth it um but the physical lifetime time you don't get that back you just do not get that back So your experience is what it is. Your realization or your relationship to the whole is what it is. It is your particular expression of what is and one could say that's all that you know, humans distinguish themselves from like animals mostly by their ability to tell a story to tell stories stories of meaning stories of purpose and one could say that anyone, anyone's story is just another story and we all can make up our own stories but is there something that is true that is part of reality in its purest form that can be formulated into a story that is not just another story somebody invented it, but that is actually a true story. The truest, most deepest story that is true for everybody. Just points to ponder. And I could go further in that. I have my own story to tell in that regard. And you can probably see I'm just kind of rambling on. I should have made this a horizontal video, <laughs> not a, a short. <laughs> because it's already going on 12 minutes now. I once met somebody who has since then passed. He was about 20 years older than me. And there was a wordless connection to the depth of my soul and through it that defies words. And I sometimes wish I could still sit with him, just sitting with him. I miss that. But I did have the experience, and it is precious. I am so glad he showed up for that, those brief times in my life. Oh, what is it that you love? Do that. Now, there are some things about that that are challenging because lately I don't want to do many of the things that I had committed to do. I want to do other things. 
and there's this big huge movement do what you love trust your heart well you know it's like when a mother had a child or the parent have a child and they agreed for like 18 years to raise it to the best of their ability you don't just walk out on them because you feel like going surfing all the time or some such thing so so this sense of obligation does come in and responsibility and reliability and so yeah do what you love is great and that doesn't mean you become irresponsible and unreliable does it but you can possibly feel the tension that there is and then there is this thing that E.J. Gold says you know you don't have to like it but you can learn to like it and that speaks to a whole other process it's like you can learn to like it whatever it is you're doing you can learn to love whatever it is that is happening that's a whole different realization and it goes a lot deeper so enough rambling I don't know if I'm gonna ever post this be well be aware do what your deepest self calls you to do in other words all you gotta do is you only more so meaning only consciously bye bye <laughs>